Hello. And the rain, it has arrived here in Kern County and it's only just beginning. Raina Harvey joins us live now from the grapevine with a look at the latest. Raina, tell us, how are you keeping dry out there? Hey, Allie, right here at the base of the grapevine where we've encountered nothing but slick and wet roads all morning long south side on the grapevine. Well, the main problem we see right now is the wind. It's pretty unforgiving, kind of blowing us back and forth, trying to keep the Camry steady right now. We talked to a few people that were traveling along here, and CHP tells us that there's a lot of rain up in the Fort Tejon area. They also tell us they've encountered a few car wrecks right now, so they want people to know that they need to take plenty of time when they're heading out, but make sure that they're checking their tire tread depth and the air pressure in their vehicles. They want you to leave ample distance ahead of you and to slow down. That's the major thing they're telling people. There's no rush to get to where you're going. You want to make sure you're there safely. If you can't avoid making long trips, you want to avoid making those long trips today and save that for a, a couple of later days in this week. Now they tell me they've had a couple of wrecks up there in the Fort Tejon area and they're actually going to be closing Route 33 at Lockwood Valley Road. Again, that's Route 33 at Lockwood Valley Road. Now we talked to some people who were at the gas station who had been driving in the area and here's what they had to say. You worry about standing water on the road and the rain, and, and especially the first couple rains, you know, there's grease on the road, it can be slippery. Saw one car that did spin out, it faced the wrong way this morning on the highway. I'm um, coming from uh, the Bay Area, San Francisco area. Um, so far, the, the weather leaving there has been cool, but coming into like um, the, the, the central side of California has been crazy. I just saw fog and just water, <laughs> like my whole windshield was, I, I couldn't even see practically. Okay, again, that closure is going to be Route 33 at Lockwood Valley Road. And again, the major thing is you want to take it slow out here. Uh, Water is not only a factor, but also now we know that wind is as well. So you make sure you take time, check those tires, and there's no rush to get to where you're going. Again, we're going to be talking to CHP in a few minutes, and we'll give you guys more information as that becomes available. For now, right now, reporting at the base of the grapevine, Raina Harvey, Eyewitness News. All right, thanks, Raina. Stay dry out there and stay safe. Now, in the meantime, Katia Hall joins us in studio. Katia, we've got rain, and what can we expect going into the evening? Uh, well, Ali, as we make our way into this evening, we're going to get a little bit more rainfall. I think we might see a break in the rain for this afternoon, but even getting a look outside, we're definitely seeing that widespread rain across Kern County. Now I'm going to zoom you into a couple of places where we are seeing a little bit more heavier rainfall, and that's along the five here just to the south of Wasco, seeing a little bit more heavy rain there along the west side parkway. If you're traveling along the 178, uh, looking a little bit more heavier rainfall there, we are going to keep our eyes on the potential for rock slides throughout the afternoon here along the 58 just some light rain still want to be taking it slow and be cautious uh, for that uh, rain on the roadways along the uh, five over the grapevine we are seeing uh, some parts of some heavy rainfall so we are definitely going to be keeping an eye on the potential for mudslides over the grapevine especially in the uh, Southern California area where uh, their burn scars are uh, located. So throughout the afternoon here, this is going to run until Thursday night. We do have a flash flood watch in place where mountain communities could see upwards of maybe two to three inches of rain. Kern River Valley upwards of maybe three and a half inches of rain. As I mentioned earlier, looking at the potential for rock slides, threat for mud slides as well, debris flows, washed out roadways and localized flash flooding. So here's what it looks like throughout the afternoon here. We're going to get a little break from the rain. I think after about two o'clock today and then we're going to start to see a little bit moderate to heavy rain continuing uh, throughout this evening here uh, seeing mostly cloudy skies into the night but even waking up tomorrow morning likely to see a little bit more rainfall mountains expected to see some shower activity throughout the day a little bit more heavier rainfall after about five six o'clock tonight so it's going to be a pretty nasty commute home uh, so just keep that in, in mind Crude River Valley looking at shower activity throughout the afternoon. Same thing for you. Could see a little break from the rain from about 2 to 3 o'clock. But then after that uh, hour, looking at things cranking up around uh, 6, 7, 8 o'clock tonight. Mostly cloudy skies into the night. And we're not done yet. We still have another day of more precipitation on the way. I'll time that out for you in just a little bit here. But for now, Allie, back to you.
Katya, and thank you. Now, emergency officials are warning those in our mountain areas to be prepared for this storm and be prepared to move if needed to safety. They say because the storm is predicted to bring more rain than usual, flooding and mudslides could become hazardous. They're urging you to monitor the conditions and sign up for Ready Kern. This is the county emergency alert program. If there's an emergency, you'll get a message on your phone and through email and sign up to other devices. Go to Kern countyfire.org and if you have any other information or questions you can always call 211. In Bakersfield firefighters, they are on their way to help prepare flood prone areas to our south. The fire department sent one engine, 26 firefighters and an urban search and rescue unit to Carpinteria. They shipped off this morning from the downtown fire station. You're taking a look at that there. Now Bakersfield Regional Task Force is on only 12 teams officially recognized by the state for its level of training and equipment. Fire officials tell us they're likely to be assigned to help with evacuations as well as search and rescue efforts. And this is expected that they'll stay down there at least three to five days. 